He's an announcer, host, presenter, and an array of many other things, but he's full of knowledge as it relates to the field of radio and broadcasting, if there's anyone here interested in that field. So let's welcome to the stage, Mr. Warren P. Warren Pereira of Hot 93. Check. Hi, Warren. Oh, no. Good evening, everybody. Hey, hey. Oi, I see nothing light bright in yeah. here, baby. You hear the voice? You hear why he's on, sir? Hold on, hold on. Then tell me this thing going on TV. You're going to walk on. Step on my belly looking good. Like All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, Warren. So let's get to the basics. Sure. You got into this field over 20 years ago. Wow, it seems like yesterday. A cinema. You started off as a firefighter. So how did the transition to a radio broadcaster? Strange career choice. Um, um, 10 years ago. Two years ago. Um... <laughs> I was actually, uh, well, yeah, just like Patrice said, I was a firefighter attached to the, uh, to the stores department of the service. Um, always had a love for music, and I was always the go-to person or go-to DJ uh, for anything that we, any functions or anything of the sort that we were having at the service. And, well, because of the voice, obviously, um, any functions, basically, that uh, needed to be held or needed to be taken care of, that is your go-to MC. One day... My supervisor at the time, his son had actually just completed a broadcasting course uh, at Edison Carr's School of Voice. Uh, Jerry was like, you know, why you don't try out for, um, why you don't try out for radio? You know, you, you, you look like you'll be good at it. So, all right, I went, I gave it a shot. I asked him for all the contact numbers. I made contact with Mr. Carr, uh, went to the broadcasting school, did the best that I could, graduated, and within about two months, Lo and behold, Mr. Carr called and said, hey, Hot 93 is actually looking for a news report at this point in time. Would you be interested in, um, in going across or giving it a try? I was like, hey, yeah, this is what I studied for, so why not give it a try? Yes. So uh, I went to the interview, passed with flying color, and the rest was history, basically. Yes. Um, I left fire service within like two days. So, so when I asked him about that procedure, I said, um, so how did you go about, how is it that somebody just pinpointed you from the school and said, Warren will be the man for it? And he said something very important. He said, when you go and you do your best, you don't know what your best will do to other people and how it will impress other people. And so all he did was what he knew to do, which was be himself. Yeah. And as a result of that, you started working at the radio station. You did not go to the top. You're right now um, the morning show host. Yeah, I just started out as a reporter um, for the radio station. I worked under, uh, at the point in time when I, I started working on Hot 93, Francesca Hawkins uh, was actually the head of news. Um, so I worked under Francesca. Um, and basically, uh, Francesca left after a couple of years. And myself and the morning show host at the time, who took over from Francesca, which is Casey, uh, Casey and I had a very good rapport in the morning when I, I went in to do the news programs. Yes. And because of that rapport, um, I literally graduated from reporter to morning show co-host. Yes. Um, and that was it. Um, I literally left Hot 93, however, in 2004 to pursue uh, a different avenue in my career because at that point in time, I was just warring on the airwaves. Mm -hmm. Then moved to morning show after a couple of years uh, and then back at Hot 93 in 2008. So I've been back at Hot now like about, what, 11, 12 years? You also mentioned as well in our conversations that nothing, this didn't happen overnight. Yeah. And there's something called paying your dues that we want to stress on tonight especially. Because I think in this, this day and age, yeah. a lot of people expect things to be handed to them. And that is not... That is not how you are going to get forward in life. So what are some of the things you had to do to pay your dues? Good. Hmm. For anybody looking to get into a career in media, um, it's not for the faint of heart, for the want of a better phrase. You literally, thank you, you literally have to put in the work, right? As with anything I, I think in life that you have to do. Um, I remember now starting out in, in media and literally working Sunday to Sunday. And this is no joke. Sunday to Sunday for not months, but years, right? And going home at the end of the month with a salary like $2,500, right? I've seen yep, some faces like, yeah, you're what? Numbers. <laughs> like, yeah, right? But it paid off for me, right? Now, my story is not everybody else's. Correct. Right? What, uh, like they say, what, what good for? They're supposed to be interactive and all that. What good for? Right? Not good for thee? Uh, no. Right, thank you very much. <laughs> right? So my story is not everybody else's. 
but it's, it's basically a proof and testimony that when you do put in the work, where is she? Right. When you do put in the Referencing work, Amanda. <laughs> things pay off in the long run. Yes, and you learn some important life lessons as well, as well during that time frame. Things like um, how to build your technique, how to build certain disciplines. Yeah. What else are some of the main important tools that you come out of those things with moving forward that will help you in any other aspect of life? Wow. Um, discipline. And discipline doesn't just mean uh, listening or listening to your superiors or being able to take advice. Personal discipline. Always being the first to show up and last to leave. A lot of people take that for granted, though, right? And that's part of actually putting in the work. Eh? Your work ethic is something that is very, very, very important in this industry. And why? Because of your character. A lot of people could stand today and say, yeah, they know me and they, they know the individual and would recommend the individual because of my character. The world of radio and broadcasting, it's not just... Um, the space of you becoming a, a radio announcer or a presenter. What other jobs exist in the field that persons who may be interested in music or, or pr presentation or hosting can get into? Radio carries a vast amount of talents. Um, for me, it's not what uh, I do only on the air. Um, I'm a host. I'm also one of the many sought after corporate voices here in Trinidad and Tobago. And what I mean by corporate voices um, is for corporate commercials. I literally do voiceovers for companies, right? KFC, finger looking good. Oh, that's you. Right? Somebody um, deserves a big clap for that one. We no, all know seriously. that voice, yes. When you're, able to, when you're able to literally master your talents, uh, there are a lot of various avenues that you could get into, especially in my media industry. Uh, corporate voiceovers, like I said, is just, it's just one of the many areas that you could get into. Hosting as well, professional hosting. Um, once you know what is required um, and being able to interact with persons, which we kind of literally do on the airwaves every single day. Um, notwithstanding you know, that they do say that every uh, radio broadcaster has probably like about 1% to 2% piece of madness in them. And why? Because we literally sit in a room with four walls with no windows you, you, and literally... You do. Right? If you work by yourself, like I used to a couple of years ago, you're literally talking to yourself in a room. Being... Uh, when I started out in media um, with Hot 93 a couple of years ago, if anybody knows the history of the company, we were actually uh, owned by an American company before. One of the advantages, though, that I've had working with, with the current company is that being owned by uh, an American company at the time, I actually learned broadcasting from an international standard rather than local. The shifts, however, that were on radio at the point in time, we literally worked five-hour shifts, right? Radio broadcasters now have it real easy. Three hours is come and go in the blink of an eye. So think about being in a, again, you're in a room, four walls, <laughs> by yourself, by talking yourself. to yourself for five hours. <laughs> I know a lot of people here are musicians as well, yeah. creatives and uh, persons involved in singing and production and music. There's one burning question that anybody who meets a radio personality or somebody in radio has, which is, how do I get my song on the air? All right, and this is where we close the segment. Thank you guys so much for coming. <laughs> that, that answer is a simple one, though. Um, my first piece of advice to you, uh, let, me, let me just get a little wave of hands for all the artists in here. Producers. Producers as well. Songwriters as well. Let me ask a quick question, though, before I continue. Uh, does anybody know the difference between a wave file and an MP3? Yes. <laughs> well done, grasshoppers. <laughs> and my, my first piece of advice to you would simply be know your product. Um, from personal experience, though, um, my radio station or frequency is one that has a top 40 format. Anybody know what top 40 is? Pop music or popular music, as we call it. Um, know your audience. I literally get emails, and again, this is from personal testimony here. I literally get emails. Now, this might be taken into the extreme, but I get emails with songs of the current Vibes Cartel Come Home nature. <laughs> Anybody knows Vibes Cartel Come Home? Know your audience. Uh, if your music, though, would not resonate with the audience that you're listening to, it doesn't make sense. So first of all, know where you're sending your music to or know who you want to reach. 
When he says that, he means if it's going to fit in the scope of the if Hot 93 good, yeah. airplay, because Hot 93 plays a variety of songs, yes, but it doesn't play Chutney, does it? Maybe, maybe not. It depends. It doesn't play classical music. Maybe, maybe not. It depends. <laughs> and so you have other stations, like urban stations, that would play more. That will take, yeah, that will actually uh, use the format. Um, my second piece of advice to you is make good contact with uh, all your program directors. Um, make good contact, meaning, uh, and not in the sense of nag, <laughs> right? Although sometimes you may need to, uh, but make good contact. Um, I am thankfully one of the individuals in the industry. I can't speak for everybody. I can speak for myself. Thankfully, and because I know how I have come up in this industry, though, I'm one of the individuals who is very open uh, to speaking with people and speaking to people, uh, giving advice and also helping as much as I can, whether by phone contact, email, whatever it is, make good contact and see if you can get your stuff done from there. And do the research to find out who the program directors are as well. You don't just show up at a station with no material and And, and, stop, and sending, stop sending your envelopes to whom it may concern. <laughs> find out who you're addressing, deal with the person directly. All those things open your chances to get your stuff on radio, maybe even Hot 93. So thank you, Warren, so much for sharing that piece of knowledge with us. You guys are welcome. We really appreciate it. And just to sum up some of the tips he gave you guys, your work ethic, professionalism, having discipline, those things are important. And it's not just in radio and broadcasting. It's across the board in any field that you get in as a creative. Our personality, you are your brand as creatives. Be personable. Be the person that people want to sit on and have a conversation with for 15 minutes on stage or 20 minutes on stage. Did you all enjoy the talk here with Warren? Does he have personality? That's a message we want you guys to go home with. Um, be willing to learn, always learn. Pay your dues, don't expect things to be handed to you. Paying your dues, and yes, there's a fine line between being taken advantage of, but there's also that other side of you need to be knowledgeable in the field you are in, and the only way you can do that is cementing yourself in that space. Yep. So thank you so much again to Warren for being you here guys with are us. You're welcome, thanks for having me. And we're gonna shoot things over back to Amanda, the beautiful Amanda, Part 93, as we continue with the program. About five years ago, I can't believe so much time passed since. It's called the Uncovered Series. I personally wanted to do this video to highlight step by step the process that is involved in creating a project like Uncovered and the different facets that we've explored over the years. There is so much work that goes into it months prior. 